So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just released iPadOS 15 beta 7 to all developers. So we're gonna check out to see if there's any new tangible differences because again, now that we're on beta 7, like I've mentioned in previous videos, these are gonna be a lot more about performance, about bug fixes, about solidifying and consolidating all the issues to make sure that it's ready for that public release come you know mid to late September when the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12 S comes out and iOS 15 gets released to everybody. So again, we're gonna see if there's any new features, any tangible differences, even if there's any icons that are new or anything like that. And then we're gonna talk about battery life, overall performance, and then what bugs they actually did fix. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. So if we go into the photos, you guys know that I like to take my screenshots of how big this update was. So we're dealing with 471 megabytes. So again, give yourself twice that, so give yourself at least a gig's worth of space to actually get this installed. And again, I'm gonna reiterate, because people have been asking, hey, what, you know, if you don't have enough space, can you not update? No, ideally, this update will take over the last firmware update. But again, I like to have at least one gig of space to make sure that it updates as smoothly as possible. So again, 471 megabytes for iPad OS 15, beta seven. And again, we're getting much, much closer to that final release. And now the next thing that we're gonna show is inside of settings, let's go find out the build number, go to about, let's click on this 15. And if I bring this up, you guys can see that we're on 19A5337A. So again, before I believe we were on F. So what that means is that we're getting closer and closer, like I mentioned before, to that RC edition. And usually after A, we get that RC edition. So I don't know if Apple's gonna release a few more betas, maybe a beta eight and then an RC, or maybe they're just gonna go straight to the RC edition in the next week or two. Because again, the next release, the next public release, the iOS 15, iPadOS 15, that's not gonna happen until the middle to end of September. So we're about three to four weeks away. So I can see Apple releasing maybe one, two, maybe even three more betas. But the one reason I'm kind of iffy about that is because again, we are on A. And I have seen Apple go backwards. It's happened once in the two and a half years I've been kind of reviewing these beta updates. But again, we're on A right now, so ideally the next one we're gonna see is a RC edition for iPad and iOS. So the number one thing that Apple actually released with this beta seven update, because I was looking around for new features and things like that, because again, the farther you get into the betas, the less feature heavy they are and the more bug improvement and bug fix heavy and performance heavy that they're gonna be these updates. So. If you go into your settings, do you guys remember when Apple actually announced iOS 15, they were talking about something called Private Relay. So Private Relay is something very, very cool, which Apple has been prioritizing when it comes to a privacy standpoint. So if we go, go into your iCloud, go into this iCloud section, you now see that we have a Private Relay beta. So that has been there before, but it's been grayed out and unusable. So here in Private Relay beta, you can see that there's still that beta right there, but if you click on it, you now have this new section called Private Relay, like I mentioned. So again, iCloud Private Relay keeps your internet activity private. So Private Relay hides your IP address and browsing activity in Safari and protects unencrypted internet traffic so that no one, including Apple, can see both who, who you are and what sites you're visiting. So again, Private Relay is very, very cool, but I did wanna mention and reiterate that this is not a VPN. So a VPN, a virtual private network, you guys have seen it before, NordVPN, IVC, there's Surfshark, you know, all these sponsors that are out there. And what they do is they do something very similar where they hide where you're coming from and kind of change up your location and things like that. This is doing something a little bit different. So what it's doing here is every time you go into a website, as long as this is turned on, it's going to send your IP address to an Apple server and then Apple's gonna strip down that IP address and then send it to another server, which is by a third party. So that is why Apple is unable to recognize who you are because yes, it's going to an Apple server first where Apple strips down that IP address and makes something totally different and makes it anonymous, but then it goes from there to a third party server, which again, even bolsters that anonymity and then at the same time, then spits out a fake IP address or a kind of dummy IP address for whatever website you're visiting, and then you're onto that website. So all this is happening in the background, and one of the issues that I thought would happen is that it would slow down your surfing, right? Because usually with a VPN, one of the biggest deterrents about VPNs, especially if you have low Wi-Fi signal, is that it's gonna slow down because obviously you're going, instead of from point A to point B, you're going from point A to point C, then to point B, which makes things a little bit more convoluted and again, it makes it a little bit tougher for your speeds to get there. So with a private relay, since you're not really, it's not really a VPN and all it's doing is changing your IP address, I haven't seen any 
latency, any downgrade in surfing the web through Safari at all. So that was one of my big worries with this private relay. And then another thing with the private relay is that you can actually differentiate. So if you do have an iPad that has cellular connectivity, you can actually decide to turn on private relay on or off for both Wi-Fi and cellular. So you can have cellular with private relay on and Wi-Fi off, vice versa, or you can have both on or both off. So if you do have a cellular iPad, which I do not, you will be able to actually change it up depending on what, your, what internet provider you're using, whether that's cellular data or your Wi-Fi. And then another thing that Apple came with in terms of privacy and making sure that everything is good to go is in hide my email. So this kind of goes with private relay. It's something that has been working in the background since the release of iPad OS 15, maybe even a little bit before that, but I did want to highlight it here because all it's doing is, I don't know if you guys have noticed when you try to log into something for the first time, you now have the option to sign in with Apple. And what that does is you do sign in with your email address through Apple, but then Apple sends a dummy email address to all these different providers, all these different services. So they don't have your personal email, which means they can't contact you directly. They can't send you spam emails. They can't send you newsletters and things like that unless you want it to. And then again, all the important stuff gets forwarded to your main email down here. But aside from those main differences to privacy, those are the only real things that we noticed. The, the last thing that was, I guess, a tangible sort of, because it has to do with audio, is that now Siri, you're able to change your focus modes with Siri. So before, Siri was kind of wonky whenever you wanted to set a focus mode up. You could set it up with Siri, but if you wanted to change it, then Siri would get confused and not do it. But now with iPad OS 15 beta 7, that issue has been totally fixed. And then the last thing we're going to touch on actually is battery life. So if we go back into settings, let's go to the battery section. So again, we haven't been running beta 7 too, too long. So this is mostly talking about uh, beta 6 and how that's been going. But you're looking at about an hour and 50 minutes of screen on time. But again, don't focus on that number. Go to the individual days and see what's going on. So on a day like this, we used about 80 to 85% of my battery, less than four hours of screen on time. Again, so YouTube, LumaFusion, but you can see that Whenever you want to hone in on your battery life and make sure that you're getting the most out of it, go in here, go into the separate sections and see which applications are taking up the most battery. So you have YouTube almost three hours, that took up 65%. And then you have LumaFusion took up 27%, but only 47 minutes of screen on time. So I would, I would have been able to use LumaFusion less compared to YouTube and taking up more basically energy and more percentage of your battery because it's a more task intensive application. And then on a day like this, Three and a half hours of screen on time, very similar breakdown. So 30% for two hours on YouTube, 18%, so close to 20% with only about half an hour of usage on LumaFusion. So you can see that LumaFusion does drain the battery a decent amount. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many tangible differences with this beta seven release. And again, I'm gonna keep reiterating, the farther along we get in those higher beta numbers and the lower we get in that build number with in terms of letters going down all the way down to A and RC edition, we're gonna get less tangible differences and less features as opposed to more bug fixes and improvements to the performance and things like that to again, get us ready to go for the entire public release that Apple will be dropping at hopefully the end of September, maybe a little bit earlier when those iPhone 12s get announced or those iPhone 13s, I mean, or the 12s, whatever Apple wants to call them. But overall, you know, the iPadOS beta program has been the most stable that I personally use. And I started using the beta programs back in iPadOS 13 when they first really kind of separated iOS and iPadOS because I wanted to see what iPadOS was going to be all about. So again, I think at this point I would recommend putting the beta program on your device if you're really you know, like yearning to get it. But at the same time, you know, you've gone this, this long without trying out the iPadOS 15 or iOS 15. So, you know, what's a couple more weeks or maybe like one more month before it gets released to everybody else. But so far for my personal experience on my iPad and now even on the iPhone, I've had zero issues from a data loss and like efficiency standpoint. Yes, we have some issues with some apps that crash and things like that, but even when they do crash and then I just open them back up again, I'm right exactly where I was, whether it is something as important as LumaFusion or something as simple as being in the middle of a tweet and kind of, you know, it crashing on you and things like that. But again, all the apps kind of just reopen exactly where they were and where you left off. So I've had zero data loss with this beta program, which is the number one thing that you're afraid of when it comes to putting in these beta softwares into your actual main device and your working devices, right? But again, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you guys learned something new. I really wanna push that battery performance to get us that 10 hour battery life situation, but I don't think we're gonna get there, especially with the Magic Keyboard and, when, and with the types of tasks that I use with the iPad Pro. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.